But first, as we come on the air, it is life in prison for the Seminole Heights serial killer after his stunning admission today to the murders of these four people more than five years later. You're watching 10 Tampa Bay at 5. I'm Josh Sidorowitz. And I'm Courtney Robinson. It is a day that families say that they have been waiting for, but not with the ending that most of these families expected as the state agreed to accept his guilty plea to four counts of first-degree murder in exchange for taking the death penalty off the table. This killing spree terrorized Tampa Bay for nearly two months. This community watched as one, then two, then three, then finally four people were killed. The people in the Seminole Heights community wondered if they or their loved ones were next. The state attorney says today's decision came down to the victims' families, and they were able to speak directly to the admitted killer. So as we keep you informed and connected, this evening we have team coverage. Our Megan Myers spent today in the neighborhood learning how these crimes not only gripped the community with fear, but also brought them together. And we start tonight with 10 Tampa Bay's Eric Glasser outside the Hillsborough County Courthouse. And Eric, you were there when this plea deal came down. Yeah, Courtney and Josh, we were actually already here because we were told that today was going to be the beginning of a three-day hearing whereby defense attorneys for Howell Donaldson III were going to try to have key physical evidence against him thrown out. We ended up with something completely unexpected. Right. Howell Donaldson III shocking most of those in the courtroom, pleading guilty to four counts of murder, part of a deal his attorneys approached prosecutors with about two weeks ago. The evidence in this case is substantial. We are confident that a jury would have found him guilty as charged if we moved forward to a jury trial. Prosecutors say they only accepted the deal to spare family members the emotional trauma of reliving the case, which was set to go to trial in August. None of these families here today have I ever met before today other than on Zoom. And speaking of Zoom, you sat there numerous times with such a smirk on your face as if you did not have a care in this world. I've never wanted to reach through anything in my life and just smack somebody's soul. Yes. While at least one relative still wanted to pursue the death penalty, most supported the decision. We suffered for five years. Every family here, we suffered for five years. I can finally sleep tonight. No more crying, no more being angry. I'm just glad it's over with. In taking the plea deal, Donaldson now admits to the deadly, random, and terrifying crime spree that ended with the murders of Ronald Felton, Anthony Niboa, Monica Hoffa, and Benjamin Mitchell. What this guilty plea does, it confirms what we already knew, that he planned, ruthlessly killed, and held our city hostage for 51 days. For his plea, Donaldson receives four consecutive life sentences. No trial, no appeal, no parole, ever. These families no longer have to see this monster in a courtroom. He will spend the rest of his life in a cage of his own construction. But I also know that the day will come where he's going to meet his baker. And he's going to rot in hell. Again, there were several family members who said they still would have preferred that this go to trial and have the opportunity to see whether Howell Donaldson III would receive the death penalty. But prosecutors say that a majority of the family members at this point acknowledge that nothing was ever going to bring their loved ones back and that they would prefer to begin the process of putting this behind them. Live in Tampa, Eric Lasser, 10 Tampa Bay. 51 days. That is how much time passed between the first murder and when police caught up to Donaldson. And during those 51 days, fear rose as more victims were found. Tonight, we take you back to the beginning. This is all started October 9th, 2017. 22-year-old Benjamin Mitchell was found shot to death at a bus stop near North 15th Street and East Frierson Avenue. It was less than a week later, October 13th, the body of 32-year-old Monica Hoffa was found. Police say that she was killed two days prior to that. By October 17th, investigators were beginning to think that these two murders were connected, but they had no motive, no suspects. Two days after that, 20-year-old Anthony Niboa became the third victim. The community was on edge and police were stepping up their search. But nearly a month would then go by before the killer struck again. 
On November 14th, 60-year-old Ronnie Felton was shot from behind and killed near North Nebraska Avenue and East McBerry Street. Over the next two weeks, investigators went through surveillance video, increased the reward for information to $110,000, then finally, a break in the case. It was on November 28th when police responded to this McDonald's in Ybor City and arrested a man after he gave the restaurant's manager a gun. Hours after the arrest, police confirmed he was suspected in the Seminole Heights killings and they charged Howell Donaldson III with four counts of first degree murder. Last year, a judge approved the defense's request to consolidate the four cases. He was set to go to trial this August. You know, we talked a lot about the families that this impacted, but it also impacted just the larger Seminole Heights community. So 10 Tampa Bay's Megan Meyer, she spent the day out in the neighborhood to get some insight into how they dealt with the case and also with today's announcement. Benjamin Mitchell was waiting at this heart bus stop when he was shot four times. After that came the string of murders, causing a lot of fear in the community, but also bringing people together to try and find answers. People volunteering to join neighborhood watch groups, churches offering to feed officers working long hours, strangers looking out for one another. That's how Andrea Colley describes the time when the search was on for a serial killer in Seminole Heights. She opened the Seminole Heights General Store with her husband in 2013. They both had called this area home for years. This specific time was a time they'll never forget. I remember a lot of people in the neighborhood were very fearful um, to come outside to do their normal activities. They didn't walk as much. Their dogs, you know, in the parks were empty, the dog parks and the, you know, just regular parks. And um, traffic was very light. Um, people were eating in. The search for Donaldson lasted well over a month. I'm reporting in Seminole Heights. Megan Myers, 10 Tampa Bay.